Okay, with us today we have uh, Peter Handler, uh, formerly of the Java SIG and now of the uh, RIM application architecture uh, working group within HL7. And um, first off, uh, let me ask you a question about this new name, the RIM-based ar application architecture uh, group. It was just widened in scope. Um, could you tell uh, me what the new goal of that particular group is and uh, what it aims to do? Um, first, I should probably say how the Java SIG got started so that we can see how it uh, moved over. Um, when the Java SIG started, it was specifically to make it easier to write healthcare applications in Java. And um, when um, people approached me about that, uh, I was thinking that the HL7 would be the organization that has a very advanced data model which is called the reference information model that if you were going to extend the Java language to make it easy to write healthcare applications that what you would want to do is make a series of libraries that would extend the language that would make it easy to make applications based on this data model called the reference information model which is the model that HL7 version 3 messaging is uh, based on. Now the right off the bat we were thinking that the model, the RIM model, is too good to be limited to um, messaging. If, if someone were to show a programmer the RIM data model and not pre give them uh, any pre-information saying this is created by an organization called HL7 and the scope of HL7 is to talk about messaging and only messaging. If you just put the data model in front of, um, in front of a, a, a programmer or an architect and you said look at this model, what do you think this is for? Probably they'd look at the model and they'd say this is a very comprehensive model which could be used for making um, uh, healthcare applications and probably even used to make uh, persistence layers and relational databases. So we set out in the Java SIG to do just that, but we had the extra focus where we were doing it with the goal of extending the Java language for that. Um, as time has gone on, it becomes uh, more obvious that the whole idea that the RIM can be used as an application architecture is not well known or discussed or thought of and that most of what we do is promote the idea that the RIM can be used as an application architecture and even as a database um, architecture. And we happen to have our reference uh, implementation which we wrote in Java which we will maintain. but. It seems to me that the important thing, the, the most important message that we're trying to get out is that the RIM is not just for messaging and um, Java was just the tool that we started with and we will continue with but it would be nice to uh, open up the group so that anybody interested in using the RIM as a basis for designing applications and back ends of medical systems could uh, contribute and get together and discuss things in the group. Well, thank you. I think that's a, that's a very good summary of where we're coming from and where this particular group is going to. Uh, does that also mean that um, you have already had experiences with multiple of such implementations and does the group now plan to uh, share and collect best practices when it comes to this type of application? Well, that's true, and some of the um, implementations across the world I learned from through you, because uh, we only there's there is no common communication channel for people that are interested in this. Um, I happen to know of something that IBM was doing with their clinical genomics product. I knew of something Oracle was doing. I knew that the National Cancer Institute had something called CA Big. Um, I knew that the Regan Streif Institute and Gunther Shadow had um, an application based on this, but it was news to me at the last HL7 meeting when you told me that certain um, hospital systems in the Netherlands were doing this. So there's probably, um, there's probably many of them out there that neither of us know about. Hmm. Okay, well maybe back to this uh, the, the Java reference implementation which is 
uh, within the wider context of this new uh, architecture group is, is, is a very good example of such an implementation. Um, could you tell us from a somewhat higher um, overview, so on, without going into too much technical details, um, how that is basically constructed? Okay, well, uh, in HL7, they start out with the data model, and then they refine that, and then finally, when they boil it down, it becomes a a uh, bunch of meta information which can be in various types of files. One's called a MIF file and that defines what the XML will look like on the wire for a message. HL7 ends up defining a number of specific XML messages that go between systems to communicate this. And what we wanted to do is have a system that would be able to take any of these messages which is an HL7 XML message and when it comes in, it gets parsed into memory in a memory representation. In our case, they happen to be Java classes, but they could be anything which is a literal translation of that. And then, because machines will forget everything if you pull the plug on them because the RAM is uh, volatile, we needed a way to put that in a database. And although for any given kind of message you can design a database, if you put it in a RIM-based database, then you could theoretically take any kind of message, no matter what the subject was, including messages that you don't even think of now, that don't exist, that nobody has invented. And if they're based on the RIM, when they come in, you parse them into RIM structures, you put them in the database, and your database is somewhat future-proof. Um, you also want the ability then, once it's in the database, to query, let's say that you have uh, glucose measurements coming in twice a day for a given patient and you're getting some sodiums and you're getting all these various pieces of information about a patient. They're coming in in separate HL7 messages, but you don't want to reproduce those messages in the, uh, necessarily as they came in. You want a summary. So you'll want a document which will show you all the observations on all of the different things for a given patient for a given time period. And with this um, in the database, you can then query for the observations, giving the SQL uh, criteria of this is the medical record number and this is the date, and then you can create a summary. So what the Java SIG is, is it's prepackaged um, class files, jar files, and you can um, download it and it already has the ability to take any incoming HL7 version 3 message, put it in memory, put that in a database, and you can then, once you have it in the database, do anything you want with it. Right, so if you were to speculate on where all of this is going, so i.e. Uh, using the RIM models, well, anywhere you want in, in, in app um, application development, so where do you see this going maybe in, let's say, five or ten years from now? Uh, the, the reason why I can't answer that is if you asked me in the year 2002 where this was going, I would have said something like, by 2003 or 2004, most medical, new medical applications will be built based on the RIM. And um, as we know, that's far from happening. So I would speculate that it will happen because I think the RIM is the most comprehensive and best known universal uh, data model for healthcare that's out there anywhere. There's nothing else that's even close to it. But Whatever I tell you how long I think it's going to be before everybody realizes that and starts building applications, it'll be longer than I think. Okay. Uh, anything else you'd care to comment on the subjects we just have discussed? Well, I don't know who will be viewing this, but if uh, they are people who might be coming to the HL7 meetings, then I would uh, be very interested if you would come to uh, the form... The, the working group formerly known as JavaSig, which will probably be called the RIM Application Architecture uh, Working Group, uh, as soon as we push the paperwork through to see if we can get that to happen.